The Pacific Theater in World War II. The war in the Pacific had several potential beginning dates, starting with the Japanese invasion of Manchuria in 1931. Manchuria is a region in the northwestern part of China, north of Korea, which the Japanese took over and ruled under the name of Manchukuo. You can see that here. In 1937, Japan advanced into the Chinese mainland, which was condemned from Western nations, including the United States. But China was already experiencing a civil war between the nationalists and communists within their country, but they put a halt to their fighting to focus on this Japanese invasion. Allied forces, especially the United States, but also those other countries shown here, like France, Great Britain, the Netherlands, and Portugal, who had territorial possessions, in the Pacific. Um, they boycotted Japan and without important imports of iron, steel, and oil, Japan wasn't going to be able to maintain control over its new territories or expand any further. So they decided to do something about it and they decided to attack the West, specifically the United States, but also um, everything that represented the West. So the Netherlands, Great Britain, um, Australia, these, these countries as well. They decided um, they were going to attack with hopes that they could win quickly and then negotiate a deal that would benefit them and work in the favor of Japan. On December 7th or 8th, depending on which side of the National Dateline you were on, Japan attacked Pearl Harbor, but not just Pearl Harbor. They also attacked Guam, Wake Island, Hong Kong, Philippines, and Thailand, which officially began the war for the Pacific in December of 1941. The Philippines were controlled by the United States since the ending of the Spanish-American War in 1898. At the time of the Japanese invasion in 1941, the U.S. General Douglas MacArthur was in charge of the U.S. forces living there. There were actually quite a few Americans, as it was U.S. territory, and they did have a military consisting of both American and Filipino soldiers. The Japanese were prepared to advance quickly, and they forced the Allied forces to retreat to a southern peninsula on the island of Luzon, known as the Bataan Peninsula, which you can see here just across the bay from Manila, um, there on the main island of Luzon. General MacArthur, he actually moved even further south to the island of Corregidor, where he stayed until he was ordered by President Roosevelt that he should actually leave the island completely. At that point, he gave a famous speech in which he said, I came through and I shall return. He does eventually return, but it takes him a few years to get back. In the meantime, the U.S. troops who were still there did feel somewhat abandoned as they were forced to surrender to the Japanese. The Japanese considered surrendering to be a terrible dishonor, and it's essentially subhuman, um, and that commu committing suicide would be better than surrendering. So because of this, those U.S. and Filipino soldiers who surrendered were treated particularly terribly by the Japanese as they thought that they were dishonorable people. Because there were so many um, prisoners of war, the Japanese really didn't know what to do with them. Um, and uh, roughly 70,000 were ordered to uh, prisoners of war were taken by the Japanese as prisoners towards Camp O'Donnell, which is at the southern end of the island. They really don't know how many people died on this terrible death march. It's called the Bataan Death March. Uh, of the 70,000, roughly between 2,000 and 10,000 Filipinos and between two and 700 Americans died. But it became known as the March of Death or the Tan Death March. So on this march, some people were hacked on the side of the road by machetes or by samurai swords, um, by the Japanese soldiers in charge of them. Some were run over by trucks. They were murdered for no reason. This became famous as a representation of the, just the terrific and terrible extent that the Japanese would go to when dealing with their prisoners.